This is section 1.2. We're going to talk about the network edge, in systems, access networks, and links. So we're talking about the network edge. We're talking about the stuff that's on the outside of the network. And these are probably the technologies that you're most familiar with because they're the ones that you've used the most. So these are the network devices that are accessible to end users. These are things like applications, Skype, a web browser. They're things like phone, smartphones and laptops and uh, desktops, things like that. As well as that kind of first hop network that you use to get onto the internet. So those are the things that you would be paying out of your pocket to have access to. Things like your cell phone provider who's giving you data. They're not giving it to you, but you pay them and then they give it to you. Things like um, if you have um, DSL or cable modem, right? Uh, sorry, yeah, DSL or cable, you're paying Comcast, AT&T for that. Those are your access networks. Um, in, within the, this system, um, right, there is the network core, and we're going to talk about that as well. Um, so the access networks are kind of your first hop um, along the edge, and then the network core is all those routers and backbone tier one networks that are doing really hot uh, transfers between, probably between different networks. The network of networks. All right, so let's start at the edge, talk about that a little bit, and then we'll talk a little bit about access networks, and then talk about the core. All right, so on the edge, we have end systems or hosts. These run application programs. Um, these are the things that you've used. There are basically these two models of communication that we'll come back to throughout this class. One is the client-server model. In the client-server model, there's a server that's very stationary, always on, that provides some resources, some service for a client. The client may be not always connected, maybe changing networks, changing uh, location. Um, classic example of this is the web. The web is arranged as you got clients, which are web browsers, and servers, which are web servers. Um, so things like Chrome is talking to Apache uh, through a client server model. The other model is the peer to peer model. You know, here's an example of, of client server. In the peer to peer model, it's sort of like everybody is a client and a server, and anybody can talk to anybody. This means you have less use of dedicated ser servers. Um, some examples of applications that use this approach are Skype uses this some, and um, things like BitTorrent to, to share files in a peer to peer fashion. All right, so as we move in from the edge, the next level is the access network. That is, um, we're asking the question, how do you connect these end systems to this first router that's at a, an uh, internet service provider? And the, the answer is um, through access networks. These may be residential access networks, so the kinds of internet that you get at your house, DSL, cable, maybe fiber if you're lucky. Um, if you're on a, at an institution like a university or a company, you may get uh, access through an, an institutional access network. Like a, you know, this, the the network here at, at this school, um, or if you're out and about on your phone, you may access the network through a, a mobile access network like 3G, 4G, that kind of thing. Just want to hit very quickly on some of these examples. I think it, maybe you're familiar with this. Maybe you have this at home. Um, if you have DSL, this is a access network provided by the phone company. I think the speeds are maybe around 1 to 10 um, megabits per second over DSL. Um, has some examples here. Cable doesn't use the telephone infrastructure to communicate information, but it, it uses the, the cable TV kind of infrastructure that now is being utilized in a, to, to transfer digital information. These have faster speeds. This says, uh, these slots say up to 30. I think I've seen faster with new standards up to 100, supposedly, um, downstream. Note though, with cable modems, you do have shared access, meaning like everybody in your neighborhood, everybody who's on this same shared sort of subnet is sharing the same bandwidth. So that would mean as more people get on, your effective bandwidth, effective speed is reduced. DSL is a dedicated kind of technology, so you get the, the whole pipe 
it's just it's a smaller pipe. And, and lastly, I guess in the home network kind of thing, the fiber to home, does anybody have fiber in like your hometown? No? Um, this is, there's not a lot of this, but fiber is being rolled out to a few select cities. I know Google was pushing it out to uh, a special city or two, and it's crazy fast. Like, like 100, it's easily 100 megabits per second and, and even faster. Within your home, you may have a setup like this. Pretty common now to have a cable or DSL modem that is your link to the access network, and then to have a router. You may have a firewall and a NAT in it. Um, may provide wireless and wired links and share that uh, around your house. So maybe you have this kind of set up uh, at your house. This is kind of extending that access network and sharing it in this uh, in a very small area. Um, often the router and the wireless uh, access point are combined together into one device. All right. Um, this is an example of an enterprise access network, which is really just an extension, of a beefed up version of what you'd have at home. Uh, often this is much more wired and you've got bigger switches and um, but still some, some wireless sharing and a, a lot of enterprise features. That's what we have here at school. Um, these may be speeds ranging from 10 megabits to, per second to 10 gigabits per second over some of these links. Uh, the 10 gigabit Ethernet is, is out and is available now. Um, let me just give you a quick kind of overview of wireless access networks. We'll talk about this later in a chapter devoted to this topic. Maybe you're familiar with this if you're into network hardware. These uh, three different versions of Wi-Fi defined in the 802.11 standard, B, G, and N at those speeds listed there. You may get wireless access through a, um, a, a telco provider over 3G or 4G depending on where you are and how much money you're paying them and, and so forth. WiMAX is another competing protocol that's out there that I, I don't think has, hasn't been completely adopted yet, um, but it's, it's coming and it's, it's fast. If we're thinking about the physical media, physical media means this is the stuff that actually carries the bits. So that's, it's carrying a signal of some sort, whether it's an electrical signal, an electrical magnetic kind of signal through the air. There's guided media, which is basically a way of saying a wire, you, you could touch it, or unguided media, which means there's not a wire. So this is generally a wireless environment, is what unguided means. Um, just some examples, you can kind of have in mind what, what this looks like at its lowest level. In guided media, we've got things like twisted pair. That's what twisted pair looks like. There are twisted copper wires. This is what a Cat5 cable would look like. It's what's run mostly through these walls. Um, they'd probably use CAT6 here, actually, if it matters to you. It's a little bit better. Um, coax cable is what cable TV runs over. Um, that's in the, this lower right down here. Uh, and then there's also fiber optic cable to carry light. So just different physical technologies that carry those signals. In terms of unguided media, you can see different types of wireless service. Um, there are these things called terrestrial microwave. Basically, those two um, antenna can talk to each other through earth-to-earth -earth contact. So you can just point two of these big antenna at each other, uh, and they can transfer at pretty high speeds, like I don't know, 45 megabits per second, if you just point them at each other. Um, these may be operating on different frequencies at each of these, so in some sense you could say they're all the same. They're all just sending information, digital information over a a wireless signal, a, a, an electromagnetic signal, but we're going to divide them out. I guess that's what the book does. LANs, wireless LANs would be using Wi-Fi 802.11. Over a wide area, we might use technologies, cellular technologies, 3G, 4G, LTE, that kind of thing. Um, and another option is satellite networks. And if you guys have satellite, you know, if you're out in the country and it's there's no um, other wired technologies close by, you can get satellite and it can be it can be pretty fast, although the latency is long, because you always got to go to space and back. You've got to um, wait for that to happen. So this is just kind of a quick overview of some of the um, some of the physical components of this system that allow us to get onto the networks, 
We also saw the network edge devices, access networks, and, uh, and we'll look at the core devices um, in the next section. Any questions on this?